Um, my name is Rebecca Hazek, and I am the Director of Marketing for Bob Hamilton, Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, AC, Router, Electrical, everything else. <laughs> I've been there for two years now, and we do everything in-house, that's including AdWords, and I manage our AdWords accounts. Um, my free time, I spend a lot of time speaking at very much smaller venues, trying to help small local business owners and entrepreneurs with their AdWords campaigns. And I'm here to talk to you guys about driving actual phone calls with a search campaign. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to stop me. Okay. Does everyone know what a search campaign is? I'm not sure how familiar everyone is. So there are different types of campaigns you can run on AdWords. Search and display are the major ones. Okay. Uh, a search campaign is pay per click, so you only pay for what people click on. It's the ads that show up when someone is typing in their search bar. And this is for the Google Display Network. Um, it's getting harder and harder for your ad or for your website to show up organically. So especially if you're in the home services, uh, places like Thumbtack, Angie's List, Home Advisor are eating up all the real estate on the above the fold on the first page of your search. Um, Maps is there now too. There's something that's hitting Kansas City next month that I'm going to talk about a little bit at the end called Local Services by Google who is now my nemesis. Um, but, but it's getting harder and harder to be found. Um, and more and more companies are getting better at SEO and at having websites and at advertising their websites. So having a really strong search campaign is important for your business. Um, so I found that the people that benefit the most from search it, I mean, really, it's everybody, but the people that are providing services, the people that have locations that people want to go to, um, so chiropractors, salons, lawyers, like I said, home services again, uh, people or places that serve people's immediate needs. So think about when you use your search bar and when you're ready to click on for those search ads, it's because you need something right away and you don't have time to like filter through all the web pages to find exactly what it is that you need. Um, and it's not necessarily the best avenue for like um, places that have or businesses that have like a longer funnel, you know, where people are really taking a long time to research something. They're not re really in the buying process right now. They're just um, looking for generic information, or it's like a longer sales process. I worked for a mobile rail car mover company before I worked for Bob Hamilton, and our search campaigns never did really well because their buying cycle was like one to three years before someone would actually buy a piece of equipment. Anyone have any questions about that? Okay. Um, if you guys have an AdWords account and you'd like to open it up, I usually go ahead and open my own personal AdWords account when I go through this, but we are owned by a corporation now, so I don't get to do that anymore, which kills me. But I'm always happy to sit down with people and go through this process with them individually. Um, I do it for free. I just really love AdWords. Um, I like the competition. I like looking at all the data and trying to help people um, see places where they can improve. So these are the things that I really like to monitor the most um, on my search campaigns. You can do this by going to your campaign tab and it'll bring up, this is Cody, but it'll bring up um, a bunch of information. You'll want to go to modify your columns. Watch your impressions, your click-through rate, your conversion rate, your phone calls, your average cost per conversion, um, your invalid clicks, and then you can also go to your auction insights to watch your impression share. There's a lot of different columns that you can add, and it can be really overwhelming. And sometimes I'll look at someone's account, and they'll have absolutely everything on their uh, campaigns tab, and. It's, you don't need all that. You can look at all that stuff, but really you don't need it. These are the important things that are telling you how your campaigns are actually performing. So uh, a good click-through rate is like 2 to 3%. Um, I have a Gmail campaign that's getting 50% right now. I'm not really sure why. I keep calling Google. They keep telling me to keep doing what I'm doing, so I'm just going to let it ride. Um, my conversion rate, a good average conversion rate is like around 10 to 12%. 
So conversion is like when someone actually takes action on your website, whatever you deem that to be, whether it's still filling out a form, setting up your email list, giving you a call. On mine, I only track book appointments because I don't care about the other stuff. Because um, when it comes down to dollars and cents, Bob just wants to know how many book appointments did we get from our AdWords spend? How many phone calls did we get? So that's all I personally count. Um, my average conversion rate is 37 to 52%. Last month it was a little rough. March is usually rough for us, but it was still at 27%. Um, and then invalid clicks, it's important to watch because you can get a lot of bots that will hit you, you know, if you can add those to your excluded locations. Um, it's not a major thing, but it's something I like to keep my eye on. So when it comes to optimizing your search campaign, specifically for phone calls, um, there are a few really, really simple, really fast things that you can do when you're helping yourself or you're helping a client get their search campaign set up to um, prefer calls. I used to not do uh, click to call as my goal. It used to not be an opportunity. In fact. This time last year, when I was here last year, it wasn't an option, and so when I spoke to the group last year, I was A-B testing AdWords Express versus the full AdWords uh, to see how it was performing for us, and I really, even though AdWords Express is really simple and there's got a lot of uh, targeting you can do with it, I really admired how well it actually performed. We were getting, you know, 27 to 35 phone calls a day at about $6 a phone call, which is insane. Um, so I ended up actually porting that over to my full-on AdWords because I wanted to get more targeted. Calls was not, click-to-call was not an ad option back then. It was just um, all display ads and search ads. So but then they introduced click-to-call and I got really excited. Uh, let's go through some simple navigation. So when I say tab, I'm talking about these tabs on the edge. This is the rest of your AdWords screen that I can't show. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but click on your when you click on your search campaign, you can go into your settings tab. Uh, and make sure you have leads set as your goal. If you want people to actually buy from you, call you, set up an appointment with you, you have to have leads set as your goal. When you just have clicks set on your goal, then it's um, driving people who are still like in the research phase to your website. And that's okay, like if that's what you want, that's fine. But if you're trying to measure, measure actual money ROI, set these as your goal. Don't forget, this is really easy to do. I've done this myself at the, um, the lower level, but don't forget to set your locations and don't forget to exclude locations that are out of your service range or um, if you are getting bots that are hitting you, uh, I do this like once a month. I'll, I'll go in and I'll set those as an exclusion so that I'm not spending money. Google tries to filter that out, but I'm not spending money on those people. A lot of people, I used to do this too, this time last year I switched over to automated bidding, which really saved me a ton of time. So every morning for about a year, the first thing I would do when I got to work, I would open up my laptop, I'd pull up my keywords list, I'd look and see what people are bidding for the day, and then I would adjust my bid based on what they're bidding and based on the traffic, the impressions, and how many people are searching for that. And it was super time consuming, and it wasn't really effective, and it was driving a lot of traffic to our site, and we were still doing really, really well, but it just didn't seem worth it, and it got me into a bidding war where people were paying $65 per click on the word AC. And that's standard for my industry. So I just, I said, nope, not doing it. So it's automated bidding. I maximize for conversions for my display or your display ads. You can maximize for clicks. You can maximize for impressions. You can maximize for all kinds of different things. There are a lot of people um, that just want to be top of the page. And that's fine, but that is really expensive. And from my personal experience, it's not necessarily the most profitable. So don't worry about targeting for search page location or outranking share. That's something that um, a lot of business owners that I work with 
have a lot of a really hard time, they'll call me in like this mad, frantic panic. How come my ad isn't listed at the top? I'm like, well, do you want to pay seventy dollars for every thumb click, accidental click on that ad? No, you want to pay for the person that's most likely to convert off of it. And then you can also use, you can go to your location options. If you are local, you can set it to make sure it sets people in your area. Otherwise, you'll get people passing through or people who have expressed interest in your area. Make sure that it's people who are living in your area. Ooh. You guys have any questions about that? Um, and then just a pro tip, AdWords, likes, they like to change things. And no matter how much you follow them and read their blogs and stay up to date, they tend to change things sometimes without you really ever knowing or noticing. So make sure you check your campaign settings periodically, especially if you start noticing major changes. Hopefully they're major positive changes, but sometimes they can really hurt your campaign. Um, so when I first, as an example, when I first imported my AdWords Express account over to full on AdWords, I kind of beat the system and it accidentally, I don't know how it did it, but it set calls as my goal, which was awesome because you can't pick that at all. So I was really, really excited. And then they caught on to it and it made a huge change. So one day, you know, all of a sudden our calls started dropping. I was like, what the heck is going on? You know, we still had great traffic. Our impressions were fine. Our cost was still really low, but we just were getting the same volume. My goals had changed. The next thing you could do that's really simple to help your search campaign is go into your audience tab. Make sure that you have audiences set. Okay, and these aren't like affinity audiences, people that are interested in your travel business or people that are pet owners. These are people that are your website visitors, people that have already engaged with your business. Um, so set that, and then you can also create an audience that's similar to your website visitors. So Google will automatically go out and find people who have the same buying um, activities as people who have bought and engaged with you. And then you can also add in customer lists if they're large enough. So we have a customer list and it's like 20,000 some odd people. And so I can target my ads to those people. So our return customers, you can even set, send different ads to them. You want to get really nitty gritty. <laughs> I always adjust my bids for these audiences because they are so strong and they perform really well for me up 50%. Now, when I first did that, I was kind of freaked out. It's like, well, I don't want to pay 50% more than what I'm already paying for people who already buy from us. But it's done really well. It's actually increased our call volume and it's lowered our, our costs. Don't forget to set your demographics tab if you have a specific age range or gender that you're targeting. Um, my, <laughs> I guess one of my tips for you guys is to never assume that you know your demographic age range or gender. You might be surprised. I always say, uh, don't guess it, prove it. So you can see that by who's engaging on your social media. You can see that by who's engaging on your website. You can see that by who's engaging with your ads. Prove it. Look at your call logs. Who is actually your audience? Um, for some people, it is very cut and dry. Uh, we, a lot of times, we get calls from marketing agencies who are like, uh, we have this magazine and it targets the wood people with this certain household income and this certain industry and they think that that's going to make me buy from them but really who we serve is everybody no matter their income level no matter where they're located we serve everybody and so don't narrow yourself down too much if you don't actually know who you're serving okay building your ad group A lot of people talk about keywords. Don't guess your keywords. Prove your keywords, right? Search terms is a helpful tab that you can use under your auction insights. That shows you what people are typing into their search bar that's driving them to click onto your ad. Um, typically, if it, they're looking for your brand, your brand name could show up, you know, eight out of the top ten. Um, if you have really good ads, it can be lower. Ours is like usually the top 
four to six out of top ten search terms is Bob Hamilton. But the other top keywords are competitors. So do you buy your name, do you not buy your name? It's up to you. Under your ad groups tab, you can create ad groups based on your major serv services or audiences. So we have, you know, practically five different businesses under one roof. We have plumbing, we have heating, we have cooling, we have router, and we have electrical. So I have ad groups based on all of those. If I really wanted to get nitty gritty, I could do uh, water heaters because that's a whole different audience, you know, or energy efficient, or I could do um, people who are looking for whole home rewires. Like you can get really nitty, but I don't, it, it hasn't proven most effective for us. I just keep it simple. And uh, so create your ad groups based on your major services. After you create your ad groups, be sure to go back into that settings tab and adjust your settings again. Now this is to drive calls. Make sure you adjust your bidding to maximize conversions. And you can set a landing page if you have one. Not everyone needs multiple ad groups. Um, if you're if you only really offer one major service or you offer one service that's kind of applicable to all of the people that buy from you, you might only need one. Under your ads and extensions tab, go use this little arrow, create a new ad, and there are all different kinds of ad types that you can create. I only now, I mean I do dynamic ads, I'll do search ads, but really what I really have focused on is click to call. So you can do a click to call ad, it's kind of down towards the bottom. I use a third party tracking number because I don't always trust Google's numbers, so I like to compare them. Usually they're pretty accurate within a few calls here or there. Don't forget, um, keep it simple, show that you provide the service they're looking for. I get frustrated when I see uh, search ads that say, um, I think it's a lot of travel ones, uh, the most amazing, spectacular, wonderful, beautiful vacation ever. Okay, but that's not specific to what I'm looking for. Like I'm looking for a beach, I'm looking for something with a hot tub, I'm looking for something that has full amenities, you know? So keep it simple, list your services, your guarantees, your hours, what's specific to you. Make it, think about what people are searching for and use those. So it's kind of the old way of doing AdWords back in the day. It was all keyword focused, keyword oriented, and then people got um, kind of away from that and started doing more dynamic search ads. But it works for click to call. It works. Keeping it simple works. This is our number one call ad, click to call ad. It just has our phone number, our name, our website, 24 hour service, $30 off service. I always suggest try wording your ads in various ways. I have about three different versions of this ad in different ad groups and I keep my eye on it and I pause and enable them as they perform up and down. AdWords usually shows a better performing ad over a lesser one, but you can decrease your costs and increase your call volume by staying on top of it and doing it yourself. And again, let things run for a couple weeks before you make major changes. Anyone have questions? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have that fight with Bob every week. <laughs> well, it's not a fight. I have that conversation with Bob every week, and then he kind of blinks out after a while. But um, that's true. Your personal branding, your branding does have a lot to do with who's clicking on your ad. So that's when it's important to go back and look at the search terms in your auction insights. Because then you can prove that the people that you're capturing have no idea who to call. They literally just type in plumber. Because they don't, they're new homeowners and they've never paid attention to a Bob Hamilton ad in their lifetime because it wasn't relevant to them. People have so much going on in their lives that we are really good at blocking out stuff that's not relevant to us in our time of need. So keeping an eye on that is important. If you're seeing that you're spending money on all branding ads, it might not be the right. But if you, it might mean that there's not enough competition out there. 
that's taking away from your organic, it might be that you're not having problems with your organic. Does that make sense? Yeah, you stole them. <laughs> uh, that's actually perfect. So that's why I switched to click to call. Okay, so we capture a lot of our competitors from our click to call. Another way you can think about it is that, you know, our click to call um, is like $6 a call. That's a $6 guarantee that our competitors are not going to take our business away. So putting your own brand name in as a negative keyword is really more of a personal thing. You have to see how it works for you. I did, um, I don't have our competitors in negative keywords, and I do watch the bounce rates on our other search campaigns. Um, and they are a little bit higher, but the cost per click is so low that it's not really worth, you never know, you might catch someone, but if your cost per click is really high, it's costing you a ton of money, and your, your bounce rate is like in the 80s or plus. If you want to do that, you could do that. So you would have an ad group that's all click to call. And then you would have an ad group that's all of your regular search ads. So you could put negative keywords in that specific ad group, but keep them in your click to call and see how that works for you. When people are in an emergency, they don't like, you know, submit a web form to 911 hoping that they're going to message them back. They call, right? So, yeah, I'm speaking, I'm calling. This number is right here. I know they're open. Look, they have a $500 coupon, free consultation. I'm calling, even though they've heard of this other one. Any other questions about that? Oh, okay. So click to call, like I said, is we have, I have more slides. Click to call is a direct line to you. There's no bouncy, okay? You can watch your call duration to see if people are like hanging up right away. If you're seeing that people are like ringing um, and then it's not converting, maybe you're having a problem with whoever's answering your phone. Uh, there was a smaller pest control company that I was helping and from their campaign they learned that their call center people were spending way too long on the phone with customers. They were losing like a dozen calls a day because their phone calls with the customer was 14 minutes long. And that's way too long. So they lost out on all that money. So keeping an eye on that, I mean, you can really learn a lot about your business as well. I like click to call because it doesn't give customers a chance to get frustrated, not being able to find the information that they need, um, and you can just answer their questions right on the phone. 7,742 phone calls since I switched to click to call. That's a lot of phone calls in a few months. A lot. A few months ago. That's a lot. We've had over 3,000 since January. There's a lot of phone calls. Right? 4,865 non-click non -click to call conversions. So even though I've moved mostly to click to call, I have not seen a decrease. In fact, we're still increasing in our web forms, our request appointment schedule. So it's not stealing. We're not stealing any customers. These are customers that we might not have gotten. There's been no decrease in our web traffic or our leads from our web traffic. I do want to try. I know you guys probably can't see this, um, but Bob Hamilton was recently bought last September by a company that owns 72 other locations. 
Um, and I've kind of been geeking out because now I have access to home service information from 72 other locations. And these locations are working with some really big agencies. And I've always been curious to see how we stack up compared to the big agencies. So big agency, number one, I can't tell you a number, but they spend well over a million dollars a year on their AdWords campaigns. You've been able to break it down to our AdWords spend and then to our leads and then taking those leads to what are the actual opportunities because sometimes your calls or your web traffic, web forms are junk, right? Current customers wanting to know about their bill, um, a telemarketer trying to sell you something, right? So not all leads are actual opportunities. And then we break it down even further by how many of those appointments, those leads, we actually book, and that comes from our call center, based on their conversion rates, and then we take it down yes, to their conversion rate, because not every actual lead is a customer service person going to be able to book. So, big company number one, their actual cost per book appointment is $90.99 for last year. Big company number three, $132.11 per booked appointment. Uh, the total for the company is $95. Here's Bob Hamilton. $26.14 per booked appointment that we ran. This is this year. $21.81 for Bob Hamilton per booked appointment. That's amazing, right? I can't believe it. And it is really exciting for me because I don't come from a marketing background. I am a self-taught AdWords junkie who learned from reading their blogs. You know, trial and error, honestly, a lot of error. Um, and just talking to other great people who are in the business every day. And it's just really, it's encouraging, you know? I think because I am so willing to learn and I don't consider myself to be an AdWords authority expert, it's given me the opportunity to try new things. So one of the biggest differences between my campaigns and their campaigns is that they're not doing quick to call. They're not. They don't use extensions, which is crazy. Why would you not use extensions? Um, they're just doing very simple, very gene generic, Family-owned business, um, feel good, happy, jargon, 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 you know? And that's really cute and friendly, but it's not, it's not working. I mean, it is working, but it's not working like it could be. And so I found that keeping it simple, being straightforward, and just giving people something to do right away, immediately, don't make them dig for it. When they're ready to buy from you, they're ready. Give them your phone number. We also do a click to message. You can do a quick message now. You can text message people what you want. We do it all the time. Great. Oh, look at that. It's been a really great year for our AdWords campaign. I'm looking forward to see where it goes. I am freaking out because uh, local services by Google rolls out next month in the Kansas City Metro. I'm all signed up. I'm all ready. I've got, you know, my accounts created. But I'm really discouraged because their cost per lead, this isn't even book appointment, ranges from $25 to $30. And it's going to completely push us even further down the page. We're not even... Yep. It's called Local Services by Google. Local Services by Google. And it's for, right now, it's just for home service companies. Um, it'll eventually spread to other services and other businesses. But I think that's like years down the road. If you are working with any home service companies, you might want to talk to them about it, get them ready for it. It's going to change how they have to spend on their pay-per-click budget. I don't have an increase in my budget. I'm just going to have to figure it out, guys. But it's going to completely increase my cost. And my cost per book appointment 
that sucks. It's going to help a lot of people, but for people like me, it could be terrible. We'll see. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but it is actually pushing down all of our organic information. So our website won't even be above the fold. It might probably won't even be on the first page anymore when someone is actually looking for Bob Hamilton. It's going to be local services by Google, three ads, the map, Home Advisor, Thumbtack, Angie's List, more ads, organic, second page. It's insane. I don't know what we're going to do. I think our SEO guy is going to have a lot of unhappy clients on his hands. Because what are they going to do? We pay them every month to make sure that we're on the first page SEO-wise, you know, or that we're at least up there and relevant. I don't know how they're going to combat it. But things change all the time, and I guess I'm not too worried about it. But it's always there. And if you're on mobile, it's even worse. Are there other home service people in here? I'm really curious. Who do you refer? Oh, hi! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Who else? Any other home services? When it comes to deciding what kind of AdWord or pay-per-click campaign is right for you, it's really trial and error. You have to keep your eye on it. Don't freak out. You can always change it back. Um, maybe search isn't right for you at all. Maybe it's just play, right? So those are that's even less costly than search campaigns are. But you have to be able to know how you can solve the customer's problem that they're having right there in that micro moment with like less than 140 characters. So knowing your keywords, setting your audiences. You can even dive deeper and set your affinity audiences, which I do. I use those. But you can get too narrow, and then you start excluding too many people. And trying it. But it's set for two weeks. See how it does. What questions do you have? It's really late in the day to be thinking about AdWords. <laughs> How do I spread out my budget? Or Yeah, that is something that's important to keep in mind, is that maybe you have a service that doesn't have as much of a profitability as another service. So if you're trying to just get calls in, then maybe you don't want to keep such a close eye on that. But like, we offer a $99 mainline special all the time, right? So my cost per booked appointment averages $21. You have to think about the overhead that it takes to send out the technician and to run the call and all the marketing money spent to even like brand ourselves so that people knew about us to begin with. Maybe that's not worth it to advertise on AdWords. But if they're looking at, you know, a furnace replacement or water heater replacement and some of those bigger ticket items, that's a good place to start. I do it based on need. I do it based on need because we want to keep our guys busy and we want to keep them running. And there's always an opportunity, um, once you convert a customer to be your customer, there's an opportunity to sell them something else. Keep a guy busy. You might lose them. In my industry. I get that question a lot. Imagine that you are retirement age, you have 12 children, seven grandchildren, and all of them have been involved in the business in one way or the other. How do you split that up? 
Bob made the right choice. He did it for his family. And he wanted to make sure that his people were taken care of by a company who takes care of their family. ARS is a great company. They really take care of their employees. And it was a long time coming. It's America, American Rescue Service. They're out of Memphis. But they take care of their people, and that's what Bob cared about. And he didn't want his family fighting over his legacy. I think people can relate to that. Any other questions? Um, our pay-per-click budget is larger than our SEO because our website has been established for quite some time now. Um, but I can tell you that our pay-per-click budget is nowhere near what other home services are spending right now. There have been a lot of people that have dumped a lot of money into the AdWords market lately, which makes it really competitive and really hard, which means you have to be even better at your job to make sure that you're not losing out. So even though we're losing out on some of our impression share on display, our clicks are still upward trending, and our conversion rate, or our, uh, sorry, our bounce rate for our display ads are 29% which is super low. So people are engaged. That's where that money for SEO is important. How do I do that? Nothing about our branding is changing. Um, like if our cost per conversion increases? Okay, I'm sorry, I get it now. Um, one of the sorry, I get it now, I'm slow, the end of the day. Um, so one of the companies um, that is a part of ARS that's probably even more established than us is called AJ Perry, and they're enormous. And they they're like three times the size of us. They've been around longer, they have better brand recognition because they've been there, they spent a lot more money on branding. Our cost is still lower. It's all about strategy. What works in your market. So we do all the social media in house, and I do a lot. We do a ton of social media, like social media all day, all the time. Um, I don't very often tie an AdWords campaign specifically into social media because the social media isn't driving people to search for you on Google, it's driving people to your website. Um, so you don't really need to, but there is crossover. If we have a special going on, we promote it, you know, on our billboards, on our TV, on our radio ads, you know, so there is crossover. We're a home service company. We offer plumbing, heating, cooling, heater, and electrical. Um, cool. <laughs> I, I, that, that was part of it. I picked um, automated bidding. I used to do it manually, but it was time consuming and it wasn't as effective as the automated. So when it's set to automated, for us, 
then it's working even harder to find people who are the most likely to convert. When you're just doing like a cost per click when you're bidding manually, then you're just your bidding on what you think people are going to convert on. You can set a max amount, yeah. Yep, you can set a max amount. But you might be shorting yourself. How is the probability of conversion? Yeah. yeah, so I do have like, like I set, I cap my display clicks to, it's like, oh my gosh, no more than nine cents a click. You know, so you can, you can cap it um, for things like that, but if you're wanting people who are like ready to buy right now, and you know that your cost per lead is far less than your cost per opportunity, you know, like your opportunity to make money, then why would you? I mean, our cost, our cost per call. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's actually, it, that, that's like, that's paying to like be there. That's not her opportunity, that's like book appointment. Like we're in their house, we actually serve them. So. Uh, like plumbing, heating, you know, furnaces, water heaters. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of there. Plus, when we're in the house, then, you know, we, they can, if they see, if they're working on a water heater and they see that the furnace is old too, it's an opportunity. Any more questions? You can always tweet at me, at Mama Keep On. Um, you can email me. I brought some cards. I'm always happy to sit down and talk with people and take a look at your campaign and offer suggestions on what I think might could help you get some more calls or clicks or whatever it is that you're wanting to do for less money. Um, it's always nice just to have a second eye to take a look and I like talking about it. So, flattered on. I didn't think I'd talk for this long, but I did. <laughs> so thank you guys. I appreciate your time. Thank you. <laughs>